Hi guys, I'm Kutai and today I'm going to be demonstrating to you a very interesting concept which is how you can make industrial data available to Splunk. Now Splunk is a very powerful big data platform that you can use to extract insights from unstructured industrial data. So what I have here is a Groove Epic controller with a temperature sensor connected to it. I'll be transmitting this sensor data into Splunk using Node-RED which is also running on the Groove Epic controller. So basically, Splunk is a software platform that allows you to collect and index big data uh, such that you can search through your data as if you are searching through the web. So as you can imagine, this is a very flexible way of identifying uh, patterns and analyzing trends. So Splunk can be installed locally on premise and uh, optionally you can use a cloud hosted version of it depending on your requirements, of course. So what we're going to do in this demo is to collect data from our programmable controller and send it to a Splunk instance running on my machine. Now, how do we actually get data into Splunk? There are many ways to do it, but in our case, we're going to use Splunk's HTTP event collector, otherwise known as HERC. So HERC allows us to send data from our controller via HTTP directly into Splunk instance on my PC. HERC can be implemented in a number of ways, including SDKs, etc. But since we have a powerful tool like Node-RED at our disposal, we're going to take advantage of that and use it as a platform for HERC to collect and ingest controller data into Splunk. But first of all, let's open up our Splunk and configure it to receive HTTP requests. Now, I'm on the Node-RED editor currently running on my controller. Uh, here you'll see that I have a Node-RED flow that is reading temperature sensor data and sending it to Splunk via an HTTP POST request. My message here is basically a JSON payload that includes the temperature value and the identity of the device. And then here, I add a header to the message where I specify the data type that I'm sending and also providing the authentication token that we copied from this Splunk configuration earlier. And then on this node here, I'm essentially sending an HTTP POST request to a Splunk API. So if I deploy this flow, the message is sent successfully. Now going back to Splunk, as I mentioned previously, the core of Splunk is its search processing language. So let us navigate to the search interface. So now here we can actually see our temperature data coming in as events. Uh, so a basic search would look like this. So this search query returns to us events from our HTTP event collector, which we called controller data stream and you can filter through your data using this time selector here and then i can also add a filter on my search bar where i want to get only the events where the temperature is less than 17.5 degrees celsius And then I can also create a time chart from the data. So as you can see, the interface also has got uh, auto suggest, which is really cool. And we also have got text highlighting for keywords. And 
and then I can visualize the data. So obviously I don't have much data to go on with here, but the point is you can search through every kind of data using Splunk because the data does not need to have a structure. The structure is actually created as you search through the data. You can create dashboards, alerts and reports, and you can also add more apps such as the machine learning toolkit for predictive maintenance. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. So if you've got any thoughts at all on this video, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, please share it with your connections.